Hi everyone, a bunch of you have been asking me to do a symptom video for POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. What are the symptoms? And I'm gonna warn you right now, I'm gonna miss some because one of the worst symptoms for me is brain fog, which affects my memory and my word recall. So a lot of POTS patients will have those same issues. So I promise I'm gonna forget some. Also, POTS affects every system in your body. So the symptoms are all over the place, head to toe. So here are a few of them. Number one, nausea. That was one of my first symptoms. I was nauseous all the time. Number two, lightheadedness. I would describe that as feeling floaty. And I just didn't know that the term for that was lightheaded. I said I was feeling floaty all the time and not in a fun way. It's gross. Uh, what else? <laughs> I told you I'd forget things. Come on, brain. Words, words, words. Um, temperature dysregulation. I have a sweat rag. I'm sweating. Let's see if you can see my hand. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it's not the battery now. Oh, yeah, there's the... There's the sweat going, isn't that beautiful? So I have really bad hyperhidrosis and uh, that's one of the symptoms of POTS. So I am either bone dry or I'm like dripping in sweat and it's very uncomfortable. So temperature dysregulation, I'm really hot right now, I'm overheating, but sometimes I'm freezing cold and it's kind of like I can never get comfortable. So my, temp my body doesn't temperature control properly. Another one is pupil dilation. So I can't tell you how many people will say, Summer, are you high right now? Nope, I assure you, I'm not high. I have just giant eyeballs naturally, and then on top of that, I have pots, and so my pupils don't dilate properly, so they're like massive when they shouldn't be. High pulse, that is the characteristic sign of POTS. So POTS patients tend to have this really big spike in a heart rate upon standing up. So the P in POTS stands for postural, meaning when we are lying down and then we stand up, our pulse goes way higher than it should. Generally, doctors say that if your pulse goes up more than 30 or 40 beats per minute, depending on your age, when you are standing up, that indicates some form of autonomic dysfunction, namely POTS. So for instance, one of the tests to test for POTS is called a tilt table test where they strap you into this table and they put you on a 75 degree tilt and they measure your heart rate and your blood pressure upon putting you upright. For instance, mine went from like 70 when I was lying down to like 150 when I was on the tilt. All POTS patients are different, so those vital signs are going to be a little bit different per patient, but generally it is that 30 to 40 beats per minute or more upon getting upright that we see in POTS patients. Additionally, blood pressure is impacted by this. Some POTS patients, their blood pressure drops when they stand up. Some goes up. I have high blood pressure with this. So my blood pressure is really weird. It's kind of unstable. It does all kinds of crazy things. Generally, mine's very high, so I'm on a blood pressure medication to bring it down. Other POTS patients actually have low blood pressure, and that's a problem for them. Again, all very, very different. So that's why I'm covering an array of things here for you. Gastrointestinal issues are commonly seen in POTS patients. Some people have what's called gastroparesis, which is where their stomach kind of freezes up. Other people have rapid gastric emptying. That's what I have. They have very similar overlapping symptoms, oddly enough, even though they're kind of like opposite issues. The autonomic nervous system regulates digestion. So your digestive tract is not gonna be working right if you have POTS. So um, I will oftentimes have one bite of food and then I get really full even though I thought I was starving. Then I'll come back and be able to eat again like an hour later. Sometimes I can't eat at all. Usually I can't eat until the afternoon at the earliest. So I just don't eat anything. And I used to be a breakfast person. I used to eat breakfast every single day. So this is very unusual. When that started, we knew there was probably something wrong. Many POTS patients feel much worse in the morning. Mornings are so hard. I hate mornings. Additionally, many POTS patients have insomnia. So they have trouble going to sleep at night. They tend to have a delayed sleep phase, meaning they fall asleep later. Their body doesn't want to go to sleep. And one of my first symptoms was terrible insomnia. I hadn't really ever had that issue before in life. So again, that was very unusual for me to have trouble sleeping. And I just stopped sleeping. I remember going to my doctor and saying, my body forgot how to go to sleep. It just doesn't know how to do it anymore. And it took two years for me to get diagnosed, but ultimately now that makes sense. My body really did forget how to go to sleep. So I have a lot of sleep issues and many POTS patients also suffer from insomnia. Another thing on mornings, think about it this way. In the morning, we've been asleep all night long, lying down where our body is happy and zen, potentially, hopefully, I don't know. Then... We get up in the morning and it's kind of like that check engine light on your car when like all the lights go on, if you've seen that meme, people will compare it to that. 
when a POTS patient gets upright in the morning, all the check engine lights go off on the car in the body. Everything goes to shit. Blood pooling, that's another POTS symptom. So there's a video earlier on my TikTok account, if you wanna check that out, where you can watch my blood pool in my hand when I put my hand down to the side, you can kind of see the zit veins start to bulge, my hand will turn red. When I stand up, a lot of times you'll see my ankles get kind of purple and my feet swell, it's very uncomfortable. This is because the blood is pooling. So in a POTS patient, your blood, when you stand up, just tanks to your feet. In a healthy person, there's a little bit of that, but your body regulates it so that your brain is continuously getting blood and so are your vital organs. In a POTS patient, blood flow doesn't work properly. So we stand up and we lose a ton of blood flow to our brains. Speaking of brain, so we went over the brain fog and the memory trouble. I also have a lot of trouble focusing sometimes, which was never an issue for me before POTS. That is certainly a symptom for me of POTS and that can happen in a lot of people with POTS. I also have these little white spots on my arms. They kind of come and go. They're called beer spots. They are a vascular anomaly. They are just kind of um, almost looks like a form of skin modeling and skin modeling can also be seen in some POTS patients. So uh, my hands will do it too. They're not right now, of course, right when I want to show you, nothing's going except for the sweating that's still going. Yay, sweat rag. Pain, a lot of POTS patients have widespread pain. I have very bad back pain and neck pain. In POTS, we often see what's called coat hanger pain in POTS patients. That's when you have uh, pain up in your head and over in your neck, and I get that really, really bad. It causes me a lot of headaches. Headaches are another symptom of POTS. Some POTS patients have migraines. Some of us, um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what's causing my headaches. That's kind of one of my uh, worse symptoms right now that we're trying to get under control. So headaches are very common in POTS patients as well. One of the most debilitating symptoms for me and I think a lot of other POTS patients is fatigue. This overwhelming can't push through kind of fatigue. It's something that is very different than being tired or sleepy. Fatigue is where you are you are exhausted to the bone and it doesn't matter how much sleep a person gets or how much rest a person gets when they have this kind of chronic illness uh, that fatigue tends to be very very severe and very debilitating in lots of patients that's something that's seen in many chronic illnesses and POTS is certainly one of them vision trouble is another one I had 2020 vision I still technically have vision uh, have 2020 vision and now my vision does this thing where it's almost like if you got um, oil in your eye, that's how I describe it to people, where it just, my vision kind of goes in and out. It gets kind of wavy and wobbly. And, and again, I go back to the word floaty. When I feel floaty, a lot of times my vision's weird and I just can't see properly. On a vision test, that would never show up. I would show as having probably 20-20 vision. I've had vision tests since I was diagnosed with POTS and they all came back fine. However, those vision disturbances come and go in people with POTS. And finally, the severity of the POTS symptoms varies per patient. So some patients have very mild symptoms. They can live very normal lives. These don't bother them very much. They may have that heart rate, but maybe don't suffer from very many of the other symptoms. However, other POTS patients are so disabled, they cannot work or attend school, and it is very, very debilitating. I tend to think I kind of fall somewhere in the middle, more on the severe side. I did have to leave my uh, job as a news anchor because of these symptoms. It just got too hard, and to this day, I struggle with it a lot every single day. I never have a symptom-free day. I have symptoms 24 hours a day. If you ask me at any given hour of the day, hey, what's your, what are your symptoms right now? That's the best way to ask a POTS patient how they're doing because it changes by the minute, it changes by the hour. And I could be fine one hour, again, I'll still have symptoms, but I'll be functional. And then the next hour I may be like, I need to go home right now, I need to go get in my bed, I feel like I'm dying. So it's important for the general public and healthy people to understand that when you meet one POTS patient and you meet another one, they're going to be very different. And that doesn't mean one is making it up or being dramatic. And it doesn't mean one is tougher than the other. It just means that they are suffering from this condition a little bit differently. And that's very normal with this illness. And additionally, it's good for the patient population to know too, because I've seen judgment between patients. Uh, I have a video on my social media accounts addressing a comment from another person who said they had POTS and said I was being dramatic. That's not the case. POTS just really varies from patient to patient. So most importantly, believe yourself if you're experiencing symptoms and believe your friend or loved one if they are too.